Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to dive into the fundamentals of teaching English to non-native speakers. Whether you are new to teaching or have already been teaching, this session aims to provide you with practical strategies and insights that you can enhance that can enhance your approach to teaching English in online virtual classrooms. We'll explore essential techniques that help students grasp English more effectively, particularly for those who may not be familiar with the language at all. By the end of this session, you will have an understanding of key pedagogical principles that can be applied in your teaching practice. Let's embark on this journey together and discover how we can make learning English an engaging and an teaching experience for our students. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I welcome you all to this session titled English Beginnings Teaching in Rural Online Classrooms. We'll be focusing on the unique challenges and opportunities of teaching English in rural online settings. So rural classrooms offer a distinct teaching environment and when combined with the online format, it presents both challenges and exciting possibilities for us as educators. During our time together, we'll explore effective strategies and tools that you can use to make your lessons more engaging and impactful. My goal is to provide you with the practical, actionable insights that you can apply in your teaching. Once again, a warm welcome to all of you. So before we dive into the content of our presentation, let's take a moment to discuss the concept of pedagogy. Pedagogy is the art and science of teaching. So pedagogy uh, encompasses the methods and strategies that educators use to facilitate learning and students. Pedagogy is not just about delivering content. It's about how we engage students, how we present information in ways that they can understand and retain, and how we create a learning environment that is supportive and inclusive. So effective pedagogy considers the needs of each learner, adapting to different learning styles, and uses a variety of teaching techniques to ensure that all students can succeed. Throughout this presentation, we'll be exploring different pedagogical approaches and tools that can enhance your teaching and help you better support your students' learning journeys. In this session, we have three primary objectives that will guide our discussion and activities. We'll start by looking the specific challenges faced when teaching English to beginners in rural settings, especially when resources are limited. This includes understanding the context of our students, the constraints we face, and how these factors impact our teaching approach. Next, we'll dive into techniques that help create a supportive and an engaging classroom environment. Then finally, we'll discuss practical methods to enhance your students' listening, speaking, and vocabulary abilities. These foundational skills are key for beginner English learners, and we'll explore how to teach them in a way that is both accessible and engaging. When teaching English to students from rural areas, it's crucial to understand the unique characteristics and needs of your learners. Many of your students may be in higher classes, but their English proficiency could be quite low or they may have little to no knowledge of the language. This is not unusual and reflects the educational and environmental context in which they have been learning. So here are a few key points to keep in mind. Your students come from rural backgrounds where exposure to English is limited. This means they might not have the same familiarity with the language as urban students. It's important to take this into account when planning your lessons and setting expectations. And even though they are in higher classes, their 
like I said, their proficiency will be very less from their grade level. Some students might be starting from scratch, while others might have a basic understanding. And there, so there will be variation in the students' learning. So you have to make your teaching methods adaptable to their styles, ensuring that you cater to different proficiency levels within the same class. And teaching these students will require a great deal of patience and persistence. Progress might be slow and you may need to repeat lessons or concepts several times. However, with consistent effort and a supportive approach, you will see improvement over time. And establishing trust with your students is also very essential. They need to feel comfortable and uh, making mistakes and learning at their own pace. Encourage them to ask questions and participate, reassuring them that it's okay not to know something the right way. So by Creating learners' profiles, you can better understand and address the individual needs of the students. This will help you tailor your lessons to be more effective and ensure that every student has the opportunity to succeed regardless of their starting point. Creating a positive online environment is the key to the success of your English teaching efforts. In an online setting where you might not be physically present with your students, it's even more crucial to build a supportive and an engaging atmosphere. So start by building strong rapport with your students. This means showing genuine interest in their learning and well-being. Use their names, ask about their day, encourage them to share their thoughts. Engage them with questions and activities that make them feel involved and valued. Remember, when students feel connected to you, they are more likely to participate and stay motivated. And in an online environment, clear communication is very important. Ensure your instructions are simple, direct and easy to understand. Don't hesitate to repeat instructions or key concepts, especially when you are teaching English. Repetition helps reinforce learning and ensures that students grasp what is being taught, even if they didn't catch it the first time. Encourage your students to actively participate in the lessons. This can be through answering questions, engaging in discussions, or participating in activities. The more they interact, the more they learn. Create opportunities for every student to contribute, whether it's through speaking or other interactive methods. Always provide positive reinforcement. Celebrate small victories and progresses, no matter how ma minor. Praise your students for their efforts and provide constructive feedback that will help them improve. A positive reinforcement builds confidence and motivates students to keep trying even when they face challenges. Finally, I've included a visual reminder for both the teachers and the students. We respect each other, we are a team, we try our best and we learn from our mistakes. This should be the foundation of our online classroom culture. By respecting these principles, we create an environment where students feel safe, supported, and encouraged to learn. To effectively teach English, especially to beginners in rural areas, it's crucial to develop their foundational skills in the four core areas. Listening, writing, speaking, and reading. Listening is the cornerstone of the language acquisition for beginners. Focus on familiarizing them with the sounds and rhythm of English. Start with simple listening exercises. Play short, clear audio clips of everyday conversations such as greetings or simple instructions. After playing the clip, ask students to identify keywords or phrases they heard. For ex uh, example, you could say, I'm going to play a conversation about buying a fruit. 
listen carefully and tell me which fruits are mentioned then writing allows students to practice their understanding of vocabulary and sentence structure begin with basic sentence constructions provide structured writing prompts and sentence starters to guide their writings gradually introduce more complex tasks like writing short paragraphs then speaking practice is vital for students to gain confidence in using the language you can use repeat after me exercises where students repeat phrases or sentences you say this helps them get comfortable with pronunciation and sentence structure another activity could be a role play which will be discussing in the engaging activities where students can develop their speaking skills then reading builds vocabulary and helps students understand sentence structure and context start with simple short texts like children's stories or dialogues that are appropriate for their level after reading ask comprehension questions like what did the buy, boy buy at the store or who went to the park something like these small questions one effective way to engage students in any subject is through engaging activities so we have the matching games and the pointing games activities shown over here so for the matching games you can create flash cards that feature images of objects or vocabulary words related to the lesson so instead of preparing everything yourselves yourself involve the students in the process of making these flash cards ask the students to create their own flash cards this could be a collaborative activity where students can work together those who are good at drawing can illustrate the pictures and those who are comfortable with writing can label them this not only helps in reinforcing the vocabulary but also adds a creative element to the learning process and the class assistant will be there to help facilitate this activity ensuring that everyone contributes once the flash flash cards are ready you can use them in the game where students match the words with the corresponding pictures then pointing game is also another great way to make learning interactive especially in a virtual classroom where students don't have access to individual uh, devices so in this activity you can display several pictures on the screen coordinate with the class assistant to share the screen from their end showing the images you have prepared then prompt the students to point out specific objects on the screen this activity encourages students to actively participate and demonstrates their understanding of the vocabulary plus it's always uh, also fun for the students to physically engage by pointing which helps to reinforce their learning in a dynamic way now let's move on to a classical game that is both fun and educational simon says This game is a fantastic way to reinforce basic vocabulary and physical actions while keeping your students engaged and energized. But let's make it culturally relevant by replacing Simon with a name that resonates more with your students. So the game is simple, uh, most of you might be knowing. You as the teacher will give commands prefaced by Simon says or your ch chosen name and the students should only follow the command if it's prefaced by simon says if the command is given without the preface simon says and a student still performs the action they are out of the game use commands simple commands like simon says touch your head simon says point to the door or clap your hands so use something uh, use a culturally relevant name if you have a student named aditi in the class you can say aditi says touch your nose 
This not only makes the game more relatable but also brings a sense of personal connection to the activity. As a teacher, you could use your name and depending on your location, you could choose a name that is more common or significant in the community. To keep it in interesting, vary the commands and include vocabulary you have been teaching in your lessons such as body parts, actions or even objects found in the classroom. The I Spy game. This is a fun and an interactive way to engage students in practicing their English language. So this game particularly you can play well in a virtual classroom where students may not have access to their individual devices, but can still actively participate by observing the shared screen. So you'll have to describe an object, giving clues about its color, shape, size, or other characteristics, and the students will guess what it is. For example, you have here is I spy with my little eye something that is red and round. You can eat and it grows on trees. The students would then guess that the object is an apple. So this game is not only entertaining but also helps reinforce vocabulary related to colors, shapes or objects or even categories like fruits, vegetables or classroom items. You can vary the game by focusing on different themes for example, if you are teaching a lesson on classroom objects, you could say, I spy with my little eye, something that you can use to write on the board, leading them to guess chalk or marker. So encourage students to take turns describing objects as well. This not only gives them practice in speaking and forming sentences in English, but also boosts their confidence in using their language. So in this activity, action-packed story time will bring a story to life by performing actions as we read. This will help make the story more engaging and memorable. As we read through the story, we'll describe the actions. This will help students practice listening, following instructions and using physical movements to understand the story better. So here is the passage. Once upon a time, in a small village, there was a little girl named Anu. Imagine you are in a small village. Look around and visualize the village setting. We are introducing Anu, our main character. So one bright morning, Anu woke up and stretched her arms wide. So you can, while Teaching them this particular sentence, you can stand up, stretch your arms wide and then slowly lower them down. Then she got out of bed and stood up and walked to the window. Pretend to get out of bed, move to one side of your space and act like you're walking towards a window. Open the imaginary window and look outside. Anu saw the sun shining and the birds singing. Look around as if you are seeing the sun and hearing the birds. Pretend to shield your eyes from the sun and listen to the birds. She decided to go outside and play with her friends in the village. Move around as if you are stepping outside. Pretend to greet your friends and play with them. So now let's talk about total physical response or TPR. As you saw in our previous activity, actions can help bring stories and instructions to life. So this TPR is a teaching method that uses physical movements to enhance language learning. TPR involves using actions to help students learn new words and phrases. By associating language with physical movement, students can better understand and remember what they are learning. This method is particularly effective for beginners because it taps into their natural ability to learn through physical interaction. So TPR helps improve retention and comprehension because it engages multiple senses 
hearing, seeing, and doing. It makes learning more interactive and fun. When students physically participate, they are more likely to grasp the meaning and use the new language effectively. So here is a scenario of a role play activity of visiting the village market. You can see this setting is familiar to many students of our classrooms, especially as they are from the rural areas, as it reflects a common experience in their daily lives. In the role play, we have two characters, a vendor at the market and a customer. So the vendor says, hello, how can I help you? And the customer responds, hello, I want to buy some apples. This simple interaction allows students to practice basic English phrases and vocabulary in a context that students can easily understand. So during this activity, students can take turns playing the roles of the vendor and the customer. And it is important to choose scenarios that are familiar to the students as it helps them connect better with the language they are learning. By using a village market setting, we tap them into an environment that is a part of their everyday experience, making the role play more meaningful and engaging. So here we'll focus on the vocabulary that can be introduced and practiced through the role-playing activity of visiting the village market. So role-playing not only helps with speaking practice, but also provides an opportunity to introduce and reinforce essential vocabulary related to the scenario. So words like vegetable, sell, fruit, buy, price, bargain and all can be introduced through these role-playing scenarios. So here we will be emphasizing the importance of integrating cultural elements into your English lessons. Connecting lessons to students' cultural backgrounds can make learning more relevant and engaging and helps in building deeper appreciation for the language. Integrating elements of cultural backgrounds into lessons offers several benefits. It makes learning more meaningful by linking it to students' personal experiences and cultural practices. Students are more likely to participate and enjoy lessons that reflect their own cultural traditions. It fosters a greater appreciation of the English language and how it can be used to express cultural concepts. So here we'll see how we can make a story comprehensible. This is a passage, a short passage from a story. So let's see how we can make it comprehensible for our students. So on this slide, we'll focus on the techniques to make stories comprehensible for our students, especially those who are beginner English learners. So use visual aids, incorporate pictures or illustrations related to the story. Visuals can help students understand and remember key concepts. Then simplify language. For example, instead of using a cozy burrow, use the term small ho home. Like explore the meadow, use the term look around the field. So. Use simple and clear language, break down complex sentences into shorter, more understandable phrases. And to make a story or lesson more engaging, incorporating interactive elements is the key. Asking questions like, what color do you think Peter's fur is? Or can you point to the squirrel in the picture? Invite students to actively participate in the learning process. These questions not only keep the students engaged, but also helps in reinforcing their comprehension and attention to detail. Encourage the students to think critically about the story and relate the visual elements to the narrative. Then repetition and reinforcement. 
these are the powerful tools and language learning especially for young or beginner learners and the story when we have the sentence peter hops out of his burrow you can reinforce this by saying peter would hop out of his burrow hop 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 like encourage the students to mimic the action of hopping along with you like how we discussed an action packed story time it is a type of tpr total physical response so these strategies interactive questioning and physical repetition helps create a dynamic classroom environment where students are actively engaged and where language learning is continuously reinforced then connecting the story to the student's own lives and surroundings is a powerful way to make learning more meaningful and relatable when we ask questions like do you have a small home like peter's burrow or have you ever seen a meadow or a field we are encouraging students uh, to think critically think about their own experiences in their village for example many of our students live in rural areas where they might have small cozy homes similar to peter's burrow by asking them to compare their homes with peter's we make the story more tangible and real for them similarly asking about meadows fields or animals they see around their homes helps them connect the setting of the story to the natural environment they are familiar with in many villages students regularly see fields meadows and various animals then encouraging students to share their own experiences like describing animals they see in their village or talking about fields they play in also fosters a sense of pride in their own cultural background This approach not only makes the lessons more engaging but also helps build bridge between the new language they are learning and the world they know so well. Then Microsoft Immersive Reader is a powerful tool and you can leverage it to enhance students' learning. So we have a variety of features in the Microsoft Immersive Reader some of them I have listed over here. The read aloud feature helps students by reading like it reads the text aloud which supports auditory learning and improves pronunciation uh, this can be particularly beneficial for the students who struggle with reading fluency then the picture dictionary uh, it provides visual representation of the words here you can see it is providing you the visual representation of the word hop So this feature is great for students who are visual learners or have limited vocabulary as it helps them understand and remember new words through images. Then you have the text highlighting feature which allows students to emphasize on the specific parts of the text. Then you have grammar tools such as parts of speech which help students understand the grammatical components of the text. Then you have the translation feature that translates text into different languages here i have given you a screenshot of how the passage from that story has been translated into hindi then integrating all language skills which is listening speaking writing and cre- read- reading and writing creates a comprehensive approach to language learning This ensures that students develop their abilities in a balanced and an effective way. So let's see an activity how we can introduce all those skills. The activity here is the introduction to greetings. So the learning objective of this activity should be to help students learn how to greet each other in english this could include simple phrases like hello good morning how are you nice to meet you and by the end of this activity students should be comfortable using these greetings in their everyday interactions and the second objective is to help students recognize and use facial expressions associated with greetings for example a simple smile often accompanies uh, greetings to convey friendliness and warmth So we have the anticipatory activity over here we start by greeting the students warmly use clear pronunciation and engaging facial expressions 
For example, you might say, good morning, everyone. My name is Mariam. I am excited to meet all of you today. Make sure to use a friendly tone and smile to set a positive tone for the class. And consider greeting students and their local language as well. This gesture shows respect for their cultural background. And this approach makes students feel more comfortable and welcomed. Then, for students who find it challenging to grasp new concepts, so incorporating gestures and facial expressions could be very helpful. For example, when teaching hello, you can wave your hand and smile to reinforce the meaning of the greeting. This visual and physical reinforcement helps students make a connection between the spoken word and its social context. When giving instructions or demonstrating greetings, speak slowly and clearly. Then, for students who quickly grasp the basics, introduce variations of greetings to keep them engaged and challenged. And encourage students to practice their greetings outside of the classroom. They can use the greetings they have learned with their peers, family members, and even with the class assistants during their interactions. This real-life practice helps reinforce what they have learned and builds their confidence. Then we, how do you check their understanding? Use a variety of assessment methods, which helps you ensure a comprehensive understanding of the student's by incorporating oral quizzes, written reflections, peer assessments, project-based assessments, and then self-assessments. You provide multiple opportunities for students to demonstrate their knowledge and skills, making learning more engaging and effective. So now let me introduce you to Duolingo, uh, a free tool designed to enhance English language skills through interactive and uh, engaging lessons. Most of you might be familiar with this and most of you have been using this. So this is widely used because it transforms language learning into a fun and an accessible experience. This platform operates like a game where learners earn points and progress through levels by completing lessons. This gamified approach helps keep students motivated and engaged. You can just share your screen and ask the students to answer questions. So one of the most important feature is that you can integrate the regional language in which you are teaching. Encourage students who have devices at home to practice it. And you can even ask the students who live nearby together and they have at least one device they will so that they can they, they practice together. Uh, next, I want to talk about StoryWeaver, an incredible resource for developing both language and literacy skills in English. So this StoryWeaver offers a vast collection of free multilingual stories that are practically useful. And these stories are culturally relevant and can be a powerful tool to connect with your students by selecting stories that resonate with the cultural backgrounds or experiences. You can make learning English more relatable and meaningful for them. So incorporating Story Weaver into your lessons can improve students' reading skills, comprehension, and vocabulary. So you have stories related to different levels of reading and all. So you can choose the level whichever is appropriate for your students. So Quizlet is another valuable tool that can significantly support language learning, particularly in vocabulary acquisition and concept reinforcement. Quizlet allows you to create digital flashcards that can help students memorize new words and concepts effectively. So these flashcards can include text images, making them a versatile resource for different learning styles. 
You can ex also explore existing sets on Quizlet that align with your curriculum or you can create custom sets tailored to your students need. Overall, Quizlet can be an excellent complement to your teaching strategies. So as we wrap up this module, I want to leave you with this thought that teaching English goes beyond the grammar and vocabulary. It's about giving your students the tools to connect with a broader world, to express themselves confidently and to build bridges between cultures. Every lesson you deliver, every word you teach, is a step towards unlocking new opportunities for your students. Let this be your motivation as you continue to inspire and empower through your teaching. Think of all the various tools and the engaging activities, whatever we have discussed and let us know what's the shiniest tools, tool or the activity that you are eager to take back to your classroom chest. Thank you so much everyone for joining today.